What's up? Jason back again covering another nutrition topic. This time we got a question in regards to nutrient timing, especially when it comes to carbohydrates. Uh, and maybe you've heard of backloading your carbohydrates. So we're going to talk about the potential benefits, who this would be good for, and we're going to tie it into using it as a tool to intuitively eat so you don't have to track all of your food, especially if fat loss is your goal. So we're going to talk about what it is, how to do it, who it's good for, and who it's not good for. So saving your carbohydrates for the evening. It's against all things that we probably heard you know, in the, in the 90s and early 2000s about not, you know, that we should not eat carbs after 6 p.m. or um, at nighttime. But the big picture and what studies show is it's most important about what we do in a 24 hour period. So referencing a couple studies, it tends to help people more based on how their day is set up and to prevent people from overeating because carbohydrates can create a cycle that makes you essentially create more cravings for carbohydrates and that energy type of feel that we get because of insulin and the effect on our blood sugar. So without overcomplicating this, the idea is the meals earlier in the day, let's say your first two meals or first two meals and a snack or so on, your goal is going to be able to keep the carbohydrates total, you know, under 50 grams or 30 grams. And it's pretty easy to intuitively do if your goal is eating around, you know, vegetable-based meals with a side of protein and, you know, a healthy fat or so on. And then you start your carbohydrates later in the evening. Now, the majority of the carbohydrates you want to get post-workout because that's when your blood sugar and insulin is going to be more sensitive, meaning you're going to be able to absorb more of that for recovery of your muscles. Uh, and less likely to get turned into triglycerides or stored as body fat. Um, and that's what happens when we tend to eat a lot of extra energy that our body doesn't necessarily need. So all this plays into the relationship of our blood sugar in the big picture. So one of the cool studies that got a lot of attention took a group of police officers for a six month period of time eating a similar amount of calories. You know, so it was fairly low or closer to the 2000 calorie range and had some of them eating their carbohydrates all throughout the day, but primarily more in the morning, and the other half of the group eating them later in the evening. And the results at the end showed that the police officers who ate later in the evening after being active burnt more body fat and preserved more muscle. Now, there's certainly some flaws that not everything was completely controlled. Some of them were more active than others. Um, their macronutrients might have varied a little bit as far as fat and protein. But what we can take from that is it can work with your lifestyle. A lot of the other reports were back that these people were more satiated so they didn't have those cravings and they weren't likely to binge on different foods and snacks as your body tends to adapt to utilize fuel from stored body fat when you're not feeding it carbohydrates and starting that cycle. And so that's a benefit of why you would want to do this is you realize if you give up carbohydrates or are not building breakfast and your first couple meals out of them, you don't start that blood sugar cycle that goes up and down where you're craving and looking to constantly replenish. Now this isn't an excuse just to save it up so you can eat a ton of carbs and cake and cereal and all that at nighttime. You still want to be sensible and use good complex carbohydrates that have fiber and so on. So another way to look at this is earn your carbohydrates. You're creating a demand for a need of them um, after you work out and you're more sensitive. So if you work out in the morning, you can still replenish some of your carbohydrates. It's just gonna be, you know, probably 25% of what you're eating for the day and then save the rest of them for a dinner type of meal where you could add in, you know, your choice. It could be sweet potatoes or rice or, you know, different types of grains or fruit uh, with uh, you know berries, things like that, that are going to be more beneficial for your blood sugar. So in summary, this tends to be best for people that work out later in the day with the goal of burning fat. And if you have common cravings of carbohydrates throughout the day, this can be a good way to break this cycle and intuitively just eat your first couple meals with very low carbohydrates. So it's protein, fat, vegetable based. And then your last meal of the day, you would have a larger carbohydrate type of serving. 
and a lot of people have found success with this. I've looked at it as a great way to, you know, maintain a lower body fat percentage, but depending on what your goals are with training, it's not always going to be beneficial if you are training really aggressive and need to replenish that glycogen and that's what carbohydrates do. Like any sort of diet or system with principles, this is one that tends to work better for other people uh, if you know that that's when you eat your carbohydrates. A little bit higher on days that you're training, so it's kind of like a carb cycling type of mentality, a little bit lower on days where you are not training and not as active. So you're essentially earning your carbohydrates. You know, when you're more lean and training more aggressive, you can afford more carbohydrates. But this in the long run will not damage your metabolism and can be a great tool to be able to use if you want to take the intuitive approach to eating. So hope this helps. Thanks for watching.